Welcome back to another episode of See You on the Other Side. Hi, friends. Hi, guys. Um, Today's episode, I am putting Christine on the spot. (laughs) And she doesn't like this. (laughs) No, I don't. (laughs) We've talked so many times about how, like, I'm really good at being interviewed. Yes, you are. You're so good at it. And you're really good at interviewing. Yeah. Like, really good. So. I'm good at deflecting. Oh, ouch. <laughs> that self-awareness. <laughs> I've learned that about myself. Damn. Is that why, like, you, when you meet someone, you want to know everything about them? Mm-hmm. And I purposely don't share things about myself. Wow. That's wild. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Trauma. <laughs> <laughs> wonder what that is. <laughs> Drama. I've been, I've always been that way. Deflecting. So Mm -hmm. not wanting to like see your stuff or talk about your stuff or anybody to really see you. Yeah, I've always been somebody who is very, um, I may overshare with people some things and then I get home and I immediately regret it, immediately regret sharing my authentic self. Damn. So that's something I've really had to work on, on, on like the balance of sharing things when I feel good and, and not feeling shame for sharing it. You turn off the fan. Yeah. It was like making a blowing noise in the mic. So yeah. Hear it. Yeah. 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 That's better. So much better. It was kind of cold on me anyways. Ooh. <laughs> a little T-H-O. <laughs> T-H-O? Titty hard on? I've never heard that. What? T-H-O? No. Oh, I- Wow. Oh my God. Am I teaching you, you something? Yeah, about titties too, especially. <laughs> about titties? Yeah. Oh, I know. I got some titty knowledge. Do you have some big weenus energy? Big T H O energy. <laughs> big weenus energy. <laughs> big titty energy. <laughs> I do. You do today. have big titty energy. I do energy. today. <laughs> <laughs> like, I let them out and I feel so uncomfortable. <laughs> it looks good. You got good titties. Thanks, babe. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> See, I'm deflecting right Deflect. now. Deflect. I know. I'm like, hold on a minute. We are not doing this so today. So how about them titties? Ha- okay. So last weekend, oh, yeah, you did another mushroom journey. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to do one also. But what did you do? Don't deflect right now. <laughs> we, well, so I guess I'll say what we were supposed to do as a couple and what we ended up doing anyway. So I read these articles um, about taking MDMA and, and psilocybin together and the way that you do it. Um, it's really interesting because you do the mushrooms first. Oh, get comfy. You do the mushrooms first and then like uh, you can dose with the MDMA like an hour or two later. So when you're coming down, oh, this is what they said about that. it. This is what they said about it. So like taking psychedelics is like looking into the abyss and the abyss stares back. But if you add MDMA to it and you're coming down from the mushrooms while on MDMA, it's like the abyss is smiling back. So Ooh. it makes for like an easier come down, but then also like you're just in a happier, better mood. There's like laughter involved instead of like, as you and I both know, immediately after a large journey. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's There's a lot of processing. It's a lot of processing. A lot of like, I wouldn't even say emotions because you don't know really what they are. It's just a lot of like, what the fuck just happened? I need to just sit here and do nothing for a little bit. Yeah, this last journey, I was texting you that night and I was still struggling to come down from it. I was struggling to talk to you and put thoughts together and put words together. It lasted longer than any journey I've ever done. And the come down was way more intense than anything I've ever done. Like really, really hard. Yeah. Very profound. Yeah. So uh, that's not what I did though. Yeah, we didn't okay. do that. Yeah. Yeah. We just what's, did MDMA. So <laughs> quick question. What's the, what's the soft spot with mixing mushrooms and MDMA? Like how many grams with mushrooms? Um, so the article that I found gave an exact like dosing script because obviously if you've never like worked with these medicines, you don't want to jump into it and do two no, grams right. of mushrooms and a full dose of MDMA. Um, so it has like dosing recipes for people who are new to it, people who are familiar with the medicines, Maybe I can link that article. Yeah, that would be good. In our yeah, bio. So I want to read that too. So 
it was a last minute decision. And because of that, we were both kind of like, mm, this is a good idea, but maybe we should wait and do this another time. So we just did the MDMA. So I just had a really fun night. Okay. <laughs> you on the other hand. Yeah, no, I just did mushrooms. So, and that was, um, it was the first journey where, uh, I was at home. I'd never done a journey at home. Okay. So let's get into it. Yeah. And for those who don't know, this happened almost a week ago and Leah knows nothing. And we do this on purpose because I don't want to know shit. We well. want this, you know, this conversation to be organic. And, and I want to be able to ask questions that I truly don't know the right. answer to because right. I will otherwise forget to ask those type of questions. Yeah. So this is truly me like digging. I'm going to be probing your little mind. Yeah. No, it's been hard to keep it from you. It has been because we no spent a lot know. of time together this week. I know. Week. And no one besides Tony really knows about my experience. So yeah, Interesting. it was, it was, uh, the first journey I did at home, it was also the first time I did a journey and did breath work right after I took the medicine. Ooh. And I think that <laughs> it accelerated how quickly it hit me. And I think it accelerated maybe how intense the experience was. Wow. You're so, like super into the breath work and stuff right now. I've gotten very into the breath work. I and, love that. Yeah. And you are very into the human design and the inner stuff. Right. We haven't really shared this, but I'm thinking about um, getting certified or trained in breath work. And you are thinking about getting training in human design. Yep. Yep. I'm more external. You're more internal. Which I fucking love. I do too. It's kind of wild how I do too. you have ADHD. I don't like you do a lot. You need a lot of external processing. I need more internal processing. It's hard for me to sit still. You can go down these rabbit holes. I for physically hours. can't. I just can't. Um, it's but wild it's, how different we are. It's like good that. yin and yang. Yeah. Because I'm sure. going to start having you like. I'll probably never, that's not something that ever interested me is like learning breath work, but you also did like a lot of body stuff. Like you're yeah. a personal trainer, like you owned a gym. We've talked about when we go to the beach, I can't sit in a chair. I'm in the water being a mermaid. And I'm just laying there <laughs> doing nothing, <laughs> basking in the sun, <laughs> baking. So yeah, you're going to, you did breath work before. Mm -hmm. So let me, how many, um, five grams, you did five. Um, I was thinking about doing six and I got scared. Totally, total transparency. I think that's normal for anybody yeah. in this space. Yeah. I don't care if you've done the same amount 50 times. Like every time you do it, there's a little bit of, um, there's fear, fear. Yeah. So for, if I were to say that I wasn't scared every time I did a journey, no matter what psychedelic I was using, I would be completely bold faced lying. Yeah. We're not that brave guys. We are brave. Actually, we're brave because we do it anyway. Yeah. I don't think bravery is doing things only when you're not scared. I think bravery is doing like doing things even though you are scared. Yeah. I think that's bravery. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So um, w it hit. And the thing is, 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 is Tony sat with me and I thought it would take. Because my first journey, it took two hours for me to go into the medicine. Because <laughs> you fought it so hard. I did fight it. And this time I did not. Um, so within 20 minutes, I was feeling it. The problem was Tony wasn't home. Because Tony took Kai somewhere. Your son and your Yeah, so, so Yeah, my son and my fiance. So um, I thought it would be okay. Um, but by the time, and so I, I went and sat outside on my deck and I wanted to just sit outside and, and be with nature until he got home. Um, but the problem is, is when he got home, I was in it. You were so far gone. I was so far gone. And it was, it like took 15 to 20 minutes, which is pretty, pretty quick. So when you talk about breath work, are you talking about like the holotropic breath work? Like, are you using like a method? Like what method do you tend to use? Um, so usually I have done Wim Hof. Okay. 
But now um, getting certified, I've been talking to Lindsay, who we've had on here. She's our Pilates instructor. Um, And then Bear, he's the owner of the Pilates studio that she works at. Uh, Gosh, I can't remember her name. They gave me the name of this woman who I could do training through. Okay. And so that breath work session, um, the day of my journey was with this woman. Oh, like it you was, called her? No, no. Oh. It was just a thing. It was just a introductory breath work session she had on her website because I wanted oh, to get a feel shit. for her and her style. You felt it. Sure. You got a feel for her. Sure did. Sure did. So um, this was the, also the first time that my fiance, Tony, has ever sat with me. But by the time he came outside, I was in it. And... I wanted him to stay inside. I wanted to be alone. This is the other crazy thing. So I have two dogs. um, And one of my dogs, Drogo. I don't know if you guys watch Game of Thrones. But (laughs) he is named after Cal Drogo. um, Which his name does not represent him at all. So he is, Drogo is this giant white great pyrenees he's like a hundred and he's huge he's huge he's huge but he is the biggest chicken shit ever (laughs) so he is um this giant dog he has anxiety i've already looked to see if mushrooms would help him you're not supposed to give dogs mushrooms so he's on like xanax he will have panic attacks all of the time he has panic attacks if it's raining outside um Do you know when, (laughs) this is so gross, when dogs get really scared, they secrete their anal glands. And so it's almost like they pee, but it's out of their butt and it's like liquid shit. It's disgusting. So anyways, I I have a story with this. Yeah, (laughs) I have a story with this. So he is like, he is scared of everything. He's like, I feel like he's like scared of a squirrel or a bird or I mean, he's a walking panic attack (laughs) and so um there was one time my stepdaughter she had like a giant stuffed teddy bear in her room and he went and hopped on her bed and he saw the teddy bear and he secreted his anal glands on her bed like so that's how much of a chicken shit he is he sounds like me (laughs) he is kind of like you that's how much of a he's just a titty so I took the medicine and it, like I said, it hit me very quickly. And for whatever reason, I did not want Tony outside and I did not want my other dog outside, but I wanted Drogo outside with me because for some reason there was something about him that was incredibly calming and protective over me. And when he, and I do not recommend doing it with dogs, um, we, we do talk about this, but yeah. for whatever reason with him, it worked that day. And usually when he's outside, he's barking at birds and barking at squirrels. And I was in this journey for probably a solid three, four hours. Not one time did he bark. Can I say what I think there's a difference in that, though? Like, I usually recommend no animals. Same. And there's like a multitude of reasons. But I think another reason is because... I don't know that animal and that animal doesn't know me if I'm guiding someone. Yeah. But when I have done it alone in my house, I, my cat has stayed with me. There's not another presence there. It's me. And I think that if it's just you, he's safe. He feel, you know what I mean? Like, but I have a theory about it and I'll go into it. I have a theory that it wasn't him. Damn. Okay. Okay. I have a feeling. Okay. I know this sounds crazy. No. Nope. Y'all know. Like, I know what I'm saying is going to, you know, break some people's brains. I think a spirit went into his body and it wasn't him. Shut the fuck up. Because right after I got out of it, he went right back to being anxious. Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. And it was a very um So, like, you just, like, knew. Like, you internally and intuitively knew that, like, he needed to be out there with you. And Tony specifically came out onto the deck and I said, I don't need you, but I need Drogo. 
And that's not something I would typically say because Drogo's not necessarily. You'd probably be like, get him the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, so m- my plan was to go into my bedroom, do the mask, listen to the music, do all of that. And I didn't end up doing any of that. Because it hit too fast? Yeah, I stayed outside. And for whatever reason, I something kept pulling me outside. And um, in our room, we have this decor, and it's a map of the Marshall Islands. And right before it hit, I went into my room, and I felt compelled to look at it. And I pulled it off our wall, and I just stared at it, put it on our bed, and just immediately went outside and laid right down and went into it. And the first thing that I experienced was the trauma of... um, childbirth I was I was in my mother's womb and because I I think that a lot of people don't even realize that childbirth is traumatic for the baby and the mother yeah and so I literally experienced the trauma of being born the fuck like go through the birth canal and all of that um And then I experienced the trauma of neglect. And then the trauma of of abandonment. And then the trauma of abuse. And then the trauma of sexual abuse. And rape. And... uh, any trauma that you can think of, I felt it. And what was crazy. Were you seeing it or just feeling it? Both. And what was crazy is it wasn't just my trauma. I was experiencing other people's trauma within my family. Like, generations and generations and generations and generations like ancestral trauma all down the line so it wasn't even mine it was wild so um I was lying on my side and I was sobbing and Tony could hear me like wailing and just sobbing and like like rubbing myself and hugging myself and he would come and he would place his hand on me just to let me know that he was there and I was safe and and all of that and I would respond back to him and say I'm powerful I got this I'm really powerful I got this but There was so much abuse in my family. And there there was one time where um we were talking about the po- we were talking on the podcast and we were talking about abuse and uh you said something about how sometimes um emotional abuse can be harder than 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 physical abuse because it's much more discreet where My opinion is a little bit different because physical abuse isn't just physical. It's emotional. It's mental. It's psychological. And, um, but there's, there's just been so much abuse through my family that has just kept going from generation to generation to generation. And so I felt all of it. And everything that I felt was, you know, my dad and his dad and his dad and his dad. And it just kept going and kept going and it kept going. And this was for like a good three hours experiencing all of it. And it was incredibly challenging. The realization, though, was. So I've always been described from most people as a very. um angry person oh shit and they're not wrong 
I was very angry. I was very angry for um, the things that I saw, the abuse that I had to experience, the fact that I didn't have a safe adult, a safe environment, anybody to talk to. But the message of the journey was that all of the trauma that I was feeling in my life, all of the trauma that I was feeling in that journey, it wasn't mine. Oh my God. It was never mine. And so, yes, there were things that happened to me and there were things that I saw and I experienced that were incredibly unfair. And I carried that with me for my entire life and it made me very angry. But it was never mine to hold and to let it go because it wasn't mine to have in the first place. It was just being around and being raised by a lot of people who were traumatized and just incredibly unhealed. And that was their pain. And it was their pain. It got projected onto me. But it wasn't mine. And that was wild. (laughs) It was really wild. Um, And that although the anger that I felt was valid because I was just, I think too, the the misconception with people who are, um, seem like they can hold their own and they seem confident and they seem strong and, 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 I think sometimes people feel less empathy for those types of people. Yeah. I was also just a sad little girl who like there was anger there, but behind that anger was just a really a lot of sadness that I didn't feel comfortable express, but I felt more comfortable with anger. Um, But just a lot of sadness that I didn't feel protected. And so anger was my defense mechanism because it was like, if no one else is going to protect me, then I'll turn into this badass, confident, strong woman. So really it was a, an incredible front that I created. And this incredible mass that people thought that it was really me, but it wasn't. Because really deep down I was just sad and felt very alone. Um, you okay? Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> How many times do we cry on these goddamn episodes? I mean, at least one of us every episode, and it's usually me. But, but, so I experienced all of that. <clears throat> and this reoccurring theme of my ancestors showed up, showing up has, like, my last journey, my ancestors showed up, but it was, like, this pretty, like, rainbows and, like, whatever. <laughs> You're like, my ancestors came and they told me I was on the right path. <laughs> yes, yes. It was so ha- powerful. Yes, yes, yes. This one was like, bitch, sit down. Yes. And so I experienced all that. But then the message was, this is not yours to carry, so stop carrying it. And also, you have this power. You have this powerful presence to you and you don't necessarily have to try to be it. You just have it. So unhealed me, it came out. The power was anger. Yeah. And now it's the message was, okay, you have this powerful presence, whether you like it or don't, whether people like it or love it or hate it. What are you going to do with that now? Are you going to keep carrying that anger? Or are you going to let it go and like have a powerful presence where you're also vulnerable and soft and you show up in with love and you show like, how are you going to show up in the world now that you have this? You've always had it, but what are you going to do with it now? Oh my God. Are you going to keep holding on to shit that wasn't yours? Or are you going to go and actually like spread some love with it? 
How many times has that popped up as the theme the last few weeks for both of us? And you sent me little memes or something that says something about it. And I just thought you were like, I just thought like it was a continuation of what we talked about in the Barbie episode. <laughs> but it's like, oh, shit, you learned that. Like that the answer to everything, like that sounds so simple and it's not simple. It's really not. It's like what we were talking about and we've, we've brought this analogy up how many times the angry vegan. And I was the angry vegan. And not literally, but <laughs> the, the, the metaphor of being like angry and not very tolerant of oh intolerance. That's what you said earlier. Yeah. And I was very, um, black and white about things. And sure, you know, I may have felt really strongly about things before and really passionate about things, but we all have different experiences. We all have different perspectives. Like we all have different beliefs and that's really okay. So let me just, I'm just going to give an example here because, you know, this was, this was my lesson several weeks ago without having to do mushrooms and that like, You can be angry and powerful and there's, there is something in that that works, but it works because you are scaring the other person into submission. Yeah. And I liked intimidating people. And I realized that you can get this, you can get a better Mm -hmm. outcome when you go to that person with love and empathy about the same situation. It doesn't have to be angry for you to get your point across. And it's almost heard in a different way. So it's like, fuck you, you're doing this and it's hurting my feelings and I don't want you to hurt my feelings anymore. Or you go to this person and you're like, what you said really hurt my feelings and I love you so much. I don't want to lose you. But I need you to do it this way. Yeah. So it doesn't hurt me anymore. Yeah. So I don't put walls up. But you know how you had to, just this last episode, you had to learn how to be angry? Yeah. You're learning not to be. I've had to learn how to be soft. Yeah. And so... I think there's an in-between that's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And so my ancestors... (laughs) They were like, you're powerful. Like your gift is how powerful you are because you show people their power. You have this confidence to you. You have this, I, I, and I know I do. I have this grit to me. Like I know that I'm strong. You're tough. I'm tough. You're very tough. I'm, I am very tough. I'm a little wussy titty baby. <laughs> you're not though. You, Anymore. Anymore. <laughs> You're pretty tough. Um, but it was, what are you going to do with that powerful presence? Because, again, you were holding on to trauma that wasn't yours. And because you did that, yes, you were a victim. But also, there's a lot of people who you're the villain in their story. <gasps> Ouch. Yeah. And that's true with anybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's hard to hear. But I needed to hear it. And I knew that. I've known that. And I mean, after I did my first mushroom journey, there were people that I reached out to and apologized. Yeah, you went on an apology tour. Yeah, because I was like, I was the villain in their story. And it was valid. It was very, very valid. Because I didn't get to express my anger. I didn't have an escape. So I projected it onto other people too, just like how people projected on their anger onto me. And it wasn't theirs. It was mine. But it wasn't mine. It was theirs. It was theirs. It was, it was, it was the people and, behind me. Right, and then the people who projected it onto me, it wasn't theirs either. Right. It was it the was, people behind them. Yeah. I mean, it was just generations and generations and generations of it being passed down. And so it was like, you are powerful but I mean, it's just like a human centipede of trauma. Yeah, it really was. Have you seen that movie? No, I Googled it once and saw the p- 
picture on the screen and I was like, nope, I nope, can't watch nope, movies like that. Nope. But my roommates in college watched it. And I'm like, no. y'all are sick motherfuckers. I can't. No. Scott. I just want that team. image erased out of my mind. And I can't believe I just said that. But it is. It's like a fucking <laughs> human, human centipede of fucking abuse and trauma. Yeah. And it just kept. <laughs> and so it's it's when that happens and no one's breaking it. It's hard to differentiate what's yours and what's not. Yeah. So um, that was the the lesson. But what's crazy is during it, um, my dog, who is this anxious, you know, whatever, for that three, four hours, he did not bark. And any time I was going through that trauma of whatever kind of abuse or neglect or whatever that I was going through, he would just sit next to me and put his head on me shut up and he's so he's also a dog who he's so big he's he can't keep his head still like so like when you even pet him on the head it's like this <laughs> he's like bobbing he is he's bobbing and weaving <laughs> all the time where he was so stoic and calm that's why i have this thought of he like, was lending you his calm nervous 100 for the first time because it wasn't his no, it wasn't that spirit took over. I don't know what spirit, but spirit <laughs> took over. Okay. <laughs> so what's crazy though. You're like, can you keep that spirit with you? Yeah. Can you come right, back? <laughs> right, right, right. Literally later that night, you know, I was in bed like recovering and he was like having a panic attack about something. I don't even remember. You're like, right really dude? I know. Really? And I was like, so that even that night, I'm like, that was not you. Oh my God. That wasn't you. But anyways, after that. Oh, I totally forgot about this part. So during when I was outside, it was warm that day, but nothing crazy. Right. It wasn't really humid. It was hot, but it was not humid. Yeah. And I was on my deck. It was, you know, covered. There's a fan out there. And you're like a fucking lizard. Yeah. I love hot. Yeah. So I sent Leah this picture. Tony took this picture and I'm laying on my side and I'm wearing not pants. (laughs) Um... (laughs) I'm in a t-shirt in my underwear. And <laughs> he took this picture and coming out of every pore all over my body are these sweat beads. And I've never sweat so much in my life. Tony has never, I've, I've never seen anyone else sweat. So like, I've never seen a photo like that. I don't think I could go in a sauna and sweat that much. I've never seen sweat coming out of every single pore i've seen sweat dripping out of people like dripping down their legs i mean i'm just like i am a sweat. sweater same like but it was, it was just, just these like perfect little droplets. sweat beads all over my body over every pore and you know it was we, like you could see them like coming out of the pores almost yeah yeah and so it was almost like i purged out all of this trauma not for me for me and for all of my family. Because purging can come in the form of laughing, laughing, throwing up, shitting, crying, crying, somatic me, processing and yes, movement. For me, I literally sweat it out. So when I kind of, I was still kind of like in it, came out of it, I just experienced like fucking generations and generations of trauma. The only thing that I wanted to do was to get into water. And again, for those, you know, if they don't know, um, I was born in the Marshall Islands and I've always had this connection with the ocean and water. And like, I feel like when I'm near water, in water, I am whole. And so all I wanted to do was get water, but I'm like, Girl, you look like a hot fucking mess. So if you get in your pool, people are going to be staring. Your nair bears are going to be like, what? She like, I look like I just had an exorcism. Okay. <laughs> That's, it reminds me of like the time I thought I thought I knew what grounding was. And I was like, well, I'm going to try it. And I went outside in the pouring rain and just laid in the backyard. And I'm like, the neighbors are probably like this bitch. She's going crazy. She's going crazy. And you're like, I, you're not wrong. <laughs> right. I was like, but I also didn't really fully under understand what grounding was. Yeah. I mean, I was trying so hard to do it, but 
I'm sure I was doing yeah. it in some capacity. Well, but and it's here's, just, here's the other thing too. Our neighbors are like these girls. Yeah. <laughs> Another reason why I didn't want to go in my pool is because I have red hair. I've dyed red hair and I had just gotten my hair glazed a few <laughs> days ago. And so sweating I had red hair all like red dye all over me from sweating so badly that I literally was like sweating my red dye out of my hair. Oh, so I was like, they're really going to think I'm crazy if I go into this water and like the water like turns, turns red. red. <laughs> You're like bleeding all around <laughs> you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I tell Tony and I'm somebody who hate I fucking hate cold. Like I love warm. So like I, I struggle with like doing like the cold plunging and things like that, because in that way I'm the biggest fucking titty. And, but, but for whatever reason I told Tony, I said, please make me a cold bath. He's like, uh, okay. So he like, you makes, sure about that. Yeah, so he makes me a cold bath and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yes, but I just want to be alone. And I just laid in this water. Because I had just experienced all of this trauma. And it was a, it was, it took a lot for me to come down and recover from it. And the only thing that made me feel at peace was to get it in water. Whatever kind of body of water that was to help me. Not even like, like though, like lukewarm water, no, like cold water, cold, ice cold water. Jesus And Christ. I just laid in it. Oh. It was wild. But it took a long time to come down. But that was definitely the most intense journey I've ever experienced, whether it be oh my God. any type of psychedelic, ayahuasca, all of it. It was, it was hands down the most challenging. Oh, my God. But I do feel like it was the most profound. Haven't you ever heard that? I feel like somebody said this to us in our live last week. Maybe like the bad trips are always the most powerful. Yeah. And it was like, that's where like it was the biggest lessons are. If you know how to integrate it, yeah. if you know that there's a lesson there and it's not meant to be terrifying, right? There's something in it for you. You just kind of have to figure that out on your own. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so uh, I guess that's like everything you're saying. If someone heard that who's never done this before. It would sound terrifying. It would sound terrifying. Not like you're hard, not selling it. Yeah, I'm not a hard sale. <laughs> it's, not, it's absolutely like, and why would you want to feel generations of, of physical and emotional and because sexual I was, trauma? I was carrying it anyways. You were already feeling it. You were already fucking holding on to it. I was holding on to it anyways. But they would look like you look at you like you were insane. And taking it back to the bad trip thing, what if you had done that amount, didn't know what you were doing, was like with a group of people who be traumatizing. Like wasn't on that level, was drinking and partying. It would be absolutely traumatic. Mm -hmm. A traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. Bad trip. I just, I feel like we always need to like take it back to that because there is such a difference in what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It was challenging. Yeah. Yeah. But so it was beautiful. It was, it was, it was beautiful. I needed it. Oh my God. I needed it. And a few days later. We've interviewed Jenny Shanks on on the podcast and. Oh my God. I forgot. I about know. This I know. And so, um. I have seen Jenny before, but we went for Tony. Yeah. Um, and the reason why we went for Tony is because he had this really loving childhood. And so I didn't think anyone, even in spirit world, would show up for me. Well, and his parents who have both passed away. Yeah. Like, he had a very loving relationship with the both of them, and they yeah. had a very loving relationship together. And he did have he did have a beautiful childhood. So, to anybody who doesn't know Jenny, 
She's a spiritual medium, but she's also like, you can't just book an appointment with her in a few days. No. Like you've got this appointment and it's set for months. Mm -hmm. And you and I were in Indianapolis the night before and we're like, we have to make it back because you have an appointment with Jenny and you are not about to miss this appointment. And I'm like, bitch, I got you. We are not missing (laughs) that appointment. We will be back in time. I I promise. I just had to make sure because you drive like a grandma. I do drive like a meme. You've got and you've got way too fast of a fucking car to be driving like a fucking meme. I got little weenus energy and it's a BDE car. Well, I drove her for five minutes and I got a little... Little I know you got a little ego in there. I was like, and I'll drive. I'll. It's fine. I can do this over the speed limit a little bit. <laughs> I'm just a very, very cautious. That's the safe best driver. You need to always drive because I will literally get a speeding. But trip. I have a car that goes 60 seconds and three or 60 yeah. miles per hour in three seconds. Yeah. So me with that car, I've lost my license twice. No bueno. I've never had a speeding ticket in my life. You're so annoying. <laughs> so annoying. But I got you back. You did. Safely. On time. On time. Everything. It you was weren't perfect. even stressed on the ride. Back. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. So I'm a safe fucking driver. So, but I had a lot of nerves going to see Jenny because so she specializes in communicating with with people who have passed. And I had a lot of nerves going to see her because again, this mindset of you were abandoned, you were neglected, you were abused, you didn't have any adult that you felt connected with. Nobody's going to show up. No one's going to show up. I didn't know we were going here today and I'm so excited. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know you wanted to add it on. I do. Okay. Well, so, so again, none of this was planned or timed this way. It, it just ha- happened. It happened perfectly. Your appointment with her and your journey over the weekend like happened to coincide. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, um, and again, you know, backstory, I, I had a, my dad got removed from my life at about five years old. And then he just was never in my life after that. And he was in the Marshall Islands. I was in the States. And so, you know, there is a lot of disconnection with him, his family, my culture. There's a lot. Um, so saw, fast forward, go and see Jenny this week and my dad comes through. You texted me that. And I was like, I think I called you immediately and you were like, I'll call you back Yeah, because I wasn't even expecting that. Yeah. And we've um, talked about your dad on this, on this podcast before in the very, very, very beginning. Yeah. And I think if you are a child that uh, grows up with a lot of abuse around you and then uh, that parent isn't a part of your life anymore, that parent struggled with addiction, um, that I had a big abandonment wound and, and I had a big father wound and I took it very personally that he wasn't in my life anymore, that I did something wrong or he didn't love us or you know kind of where your head goes it's what any child would think right right so my my dad showed up and he he passed away um and it, it's it's a weird feeling when a parent passes away that you didn't have any type of connection with because you don't have like these positive memories or there was no closure there was no conversation like it's a very conflicting feeling. Like you don't know if you should feel great. Like it's just, it's just a weird feeling anyway. So he, he came through and, um, the first thing that he said was that he completely understood and respected if, um, I did not want to hear from him, but he did want to share his feelings and his thoughts and his perspective about how things happened. And so I was obviously, I never got to hear his side or I never got to hear, you know, his thoughts and, and, and all of the things. And so, um, I, I wanted to hear it. Can I say something to that really quick? Yeah. I think that when that, um, happens, even 
when someone's alive and they make this like huge change in their life and they want to make amends or apologize for the things that they did, to me, that's a telltale sign that this person is genuine Mm. because there's a lot of people who are like, I said, I'm sorry. And I want you to hear this and you need to hear me. And I think if you, if you are with someone who is truly changing and truly making positive changes when they're alive and they apologize, the apology sounds very similar to that. I completely understand if you don't want to hear this from me. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah. But I do wish that you would hear what I would have to say. And if you don't want to, that's okay too, because I, I deserve that. I own that. Yeah. So I think that that's like incredibly selfless. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he showed up (laughs) and the first thing that he went to was he backtracked to his childhood and that he was abused by his own father and his mother he did have a connection with but she was always gone because she worked all the time and so he grew up with a lot of abuse and a lot of chaos and then he became an adult and struggled with addiction because of his own demons and he said he really wanted to be a good person, but he didn't know how. He, he didn't have the tools. And again, it goes, you know, very reminiscent of my journey. Where the message was you were just around a lot of unhealed people who didn't know what to do and, and didn't know how to heal their trauma and... and They were unknowingly projecting it and continuing the cycle, even though they wanted it to stop. He was in polluted water. He was in polluted water. And, like, I was the one powerful enough to get out of it. So he did. He apologized. And he said that he didn't. He didn't. He wanted to be a good person, but he didn't know how. He genuinely didn't know how. And in spirit, he has had obviously that time to reflect on the mistakes that he made and um, the things that he wished he would have done better. (sighs) And um, he knew about Kai and he, he knew when Kai came to the States and Kai's my son. um, And came to the States and became a part of our family. Um, uh, He encouraged me that even though um, I have struggled with my culture because of my own anger and resentment towards him um, and the memories I have in the Marshall Islands, that... He wanted me to try, but he understand, understood if I struggled with it, but to try to do things to reconnect with my culture, to remember who I am, and to do it for my son. So it's never lost with him like it got lost with me. Um, and to, to like start learning about... Uh, customs and traditions and and recipes that are within our culture and that the connecting um the connecting piece to that was my sister Tracy and he brought her up and he said the reason why he said that is she's the oldest and she's my half sibling and she's she's I'm the youngest she's the oldest I take that back. I'm not the youngest anymore. I always thought I was the youngest, and my dad ended up having other children. I didn't know that until he died. Oh, dang. I didn't know that either. Yeah. I mean, how would I know that? Like, But I didn't I didn't know <laughs> I'll that. Just, I, I'll just say this. I have a lot of brothers and sisters. Homeboy was getting fucking busy. I mean, <laughs> we all have our demons. <laughs> um, 
but uh my sister is the oldest and um it always kind of bothered me because after he died she shared a lot of positive things about him and it triggered me um because i was like fuck you like i didn't get that i don't have those memories all the, the only memories i have are bad memories and you're saying all oh he's this and he's done i'm like Ugh. It was very triggering. Yeah. <laughs> but she genuinely has good memories with him because it wasn't all bad. He's not all bad. And do you ever feel like, I mean, I know you don't know him, but I do feel like a lot of addicts get worse. Yeah. And and it's not like you just wake up one day and you're like this horrible, awful, addicted you know, person who does all these horrible, awful things. Like it's like a progression into like worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And and so that's why a lot of, even my husband was like, I'm not that bad of an alcoholic, but I'm like, but you're getting there. Right. Like you're, you're yeah. slowly climbing that hill or falling down the hill, however you want right. to look at it. Right. Like it's not, you're not far off. Yeah. He, he died in his, in his, his sixties. And I think he started drinking in his early teens a lot of years of abusing a substance well and how many before it became an issue it was fun right yeah my husband was a he was fun yeah before he was not fun right so it really wasn't like considered an addiction right in the beginning so yeah I can see how like your sister who's how many years older than you like at least a decade, right? Yeah, yeah. She's would probably have yeah. better memories, not so awful memories. And her memory in general, like when you're that age, things stick with you more. When you're a right. child, things stick with you, but like not as profound. Right. Or maybe your your memory is clouded, or or right. you're remembering parts of it, but not all of it. Right. Yeah. 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 And and um. So he encouraged me to reconnect with her because she was going to authentically share the good things about him too. And she's in the Marshall Islands. And she's in the Marshall Islands. And she is the one who, when my son Kai came to the States, she is the one who brought him to the States. And so we really got to connect in a way that we hadn't connected in a long time and and we will always have that with each other. Yeah. Um, and so he, he did encourage me to reach out to her, which I have. And it was, we've had some really beautiful conversations. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that. We can talk about those later. Right. And yeah. And, and so, you know, she's going to do In little private. things. Right. <laughs> and it's, it's, you know, when I moved here, I was fluent in Marshallese. Um, but I moved here around kindergarten time and I was behind. And so, um, I focused primarily on my English and then I forgot a lot of that stuff and it didn't get, no one kept up with it with me. And so it went by the wayside. Um, but he said that it's in me. And so if I just start working on it, it's going to come to me. Um, and that I needed to start and, you know, working on it also with Kai. And, you know, he, and he said, you know, don't you don't have to learn like sentences, but learn how to say like, I love you and learn and do that stuff with Kai because I'm going to talk through Kai to you. Oh, my God. Which I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so you've got you've got Tony's mother. <laughs> Speaking through Kai, who's Italian. Right. Your dad speaking through Kai, who's Marshallese. Right. This kid is right. going to be powerful. I know. And, <laughs> and you know, Tony's mother encouraged us to, Tony's Italian, to really change the way we do Christmas and incorporate Italian recipes. And then my dad is saying that we need to incorporate Marshallese custom and Marshallese traditions 
through food and, you know, things like that. So our holidays this year are going to be so different. It's going to be like, we're going to Marsh Italian it up. Yeah, I know. That's it. Invite me. Yeah, I know. we have no traditions <laughs> over know. here. I know. So we're going to be having <laughs> Unless pasta. Unless it's family only. Like, no, I'm totally no. fine with that too. <laughs> no, we're going to be having pasta and rice and bagogi and all of the things. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, that. <laughs> um, and so I got to ask my dad questions. And one of the questions that I asked was, because I don't have memories really of him. I have some memories, but they're not great memories. And I asked, I said, how do you remember me? Like, what, like, what do you remember about me? And it adds up. <laughs> But he said that um, I was always a helper. And so if I saw my mom sad, I was trying to help her through like those feelings and I wanted to make people feel better. Oh my God. Um, The other thing that he said was his favorite memories with me were when we were in water. Oh my God. T-H-O happening right now. (laughs) And that just, it made me happy that, like, I've always felt connected to water. And his memory of us when we had these positive moments with each other, like, that we have that connecting piece together and I didn't even realize that we had that connecting piece and now I have that with my son <laughs> you do and it was happening before you even knew that I even knew like, that yeah the videos and the pictures that you have of you and Kai in the ocean and on the beach and in the water and they're my that's favorite like incredible that it's like happening mm-hmm. for and, you and I'm putting these puzzle pieces together like it yes the mushrooms were were a piece but then seeing jenny those were pieces puzzle pieces getting put together too that's what i think i'm i mean when i talk about how integration comes in so many different ways and integration means just to like connect or make it one with your life Mm -hmm. and there are all these ways to integrate and i think that it shows up in ways that are unexpected. Yeah. And for that to be another piece of the puzzle for you. Yeah. Has to be like incredibly like healing. So healing. And also, you know, there were a lot of times growing up and a lot of times growing up, you know, in a, in a very rural town. (laughs) And again, there's, there's no diversity. You are the only person of color. I hate saying this, but it's true. Um, there were a lot of times in my life where I was embarrassed to be different and felt a lot of shame that of where I come from, where this transformation where now I'm like super fucking proud. I'm super proud of like where I come from and my ancestors and I can't wait to learn about my culture and my people and, um, wear it with as a badge of honor and I don't know I'm just well because you have a you have a son who's also Marshallese and Mm -hmm. I think that's like which which by the way we talked about this in the car on our way home from Indianapolis and a lot of people don't know this um I had a miscarriage before Kai came into my life um nothing crazy just a miscarriage fully, uh, had a plan to try again. Um, and then I got a message. You say nothing crazy. Like it wasn't a big deal, but I know it was a big deal. Like, yeah, it's like it was, I it had was, a miscarriage. It was and, very traumatic. Yes. I mean, not a big, de- not a big deal or like you were just going to, you were going to try again. Yes. But I think people assume with adoption that something is wrong with you. I see what you're saying. Like you can't conceive or. That is a big. And I hate that. That that's 
the thought that maybe people go to because even if it's true, it doesn't even matter. Right. Um, but I got a message about Kai four weeks later. Uh, he came to the States, but Kai came on my due date. And I don't think a lot of people know that. Like he came to the U S like yeah, on he, yeah, your due date. Yeah. Yeah. He came to the U S on my due date. And um, that's not a coincidence. A coincidence. No, it's not. And that kid is me. 100%. But that kid is that, uh, the thing I love about that, you talk about how L is you, but L is you in a safe environment. Yeah. Where she gets to be able to express that. So she's going to be, no offense, but like a better version of you because she's getting a head start. I've said that a hundred times. Yeah. No offense taken. And I'm I'm thinking the way that you're saying this right now and just hearing like even your dad saying he wanted to be a better person but didn't know how and you think about how many people probably feel that way yeah. but can't get out of their water i think a lot of, of of a lot of people who have a lot of trauma <laughs> from their parents and there's a lot of and i'm i am definitely guilty of this too so um they have a lot of trauma from their parents and they don't even realize it, but they're doing the exact same thing to their own children. 100%. It's hard to see because because you're not experiencing it as a child. You're experiencing it as the grown adult the from that perspective. Adult. So it's hard to see. Yeah. I think that the world would just be a better place if you saw everyone as a small child. Yeah. Because we're all just like wounded children walking yeah. around in adult bodies. But... Yeah. I think there's something to be said for you leaving where you were, removing yourself, getting taken from the Marshall, not taken from the Marshall Islands, but like removed from the Marshall Islands and then removed from your hometown. And I kind of did the same thing. Like I was never in the same place for more than a few years. And when I met my husband, I was like, there's nothing holding me here. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. And we had this, opportunity to get ourselves out of the polluted water and didn't even realize that that's what we were doing. So it was, I don't want to say it was easier for us to heal because it was like extremely fucking hard. But when you can remove yourself from the unhealthy environment and whether that's family, friends, your, uh, you know, environment as far as where you live, like if you have that opportunity to remove yourself from it, it feels like you can breathe. Yeah. And I can see how maybe your dad wasn't given that opportunity and never got a chance to breathe. That was the other thing that she said is that um, the medium is that my dad was saying he was around a lot of the wrong people. And it was hard for him to get out of it. And I'm now really empathetic towards that. And there has been a piece of forgiving him, essentially, and having compassion for the fact that he probably really struggled. He really loved us. Um, I never in a million years would have thought I'd heard you say this. Mm-hmm. Even like when you told me this afterwards. I was like, we're going to have to scrap the whole first season of our podcast because <laughs> this is, but I also love that we are able to like share like the our truth. journeys in real time. Yeah. Like we are learning as we go just like everyone else. Yeah. And we're owning when we are wrong and we're owning when we make mistakes And I love that because no one can hold that against you because you're like, oh, I know I said those things. Yeah. And, and, and (gasps) trust me, no one has punished me more than I've punished myself. Yeah. Same for you, I'm sure. Yeah. So, you know, I've, you can't hold anything against me because I own everything. Right. Even like, if you're like, well, that's not how you used to be. Like, I know, I know that. Yeah. I know I used yeah. to be different. Sometimes people are like, oh, you used to be so judgmental about people who used drugs. And I'm like, you're right. Totally. Absolutely. I own it. But I was I, wrong. Yeah, I was wrong. 
All right. <laughs> but uh my bad. <laughs> yeah. So um the other thing is Tony was with me during my session with Jenny. And there is a picture I have posted. I love that you would are like, this was like a thing. Planting seeds. Literal breadcrumbs. Yeah. There were little, literal breadcrumbs. And I just, I figured it out like a few months ago. I found this random picture of myself and it's my fourth birthday and I'm sitting at my kitchen table, like grinning from like ear to ear. I'm getting ready to blow out my candles and my dad is behind me and he's wearing a t-shirt that says Tony. I remember when you found that and you were like, what the fuck? (laughs) fuck? (laughs) And Tony will come on eventually um, on the podcast. But for those who don't know Tony, he is my safe space. He is, (laughs) he, uh, and I'm not trying to make this sound weird, um, he has healed a lot of mother and father wounds that I've had. He takes care of you. He Not is, like in a weird way. But how we talk about like the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Right. He is very nurturing. Um, he is very protective of me. He's very loyal. Uh, he is just, he's just a good man. And a good man who grew up, you know, had a good childhood and had, like great parents and loving parents. And he really got this. His trauma is the fact that they are not here anymore. That's his really big trauma. Um, but he is just really stable and, and, and he's very grounding for me. Um, and he, he was very much so what I needed. And so healing and healing while I've been with him has, uh, like I've I've learned to be soft and vulnerable and Leah and my best friend Amanda have experienced this where it's like I've when we stayed at the hotel for a concert when I'm with Tony it's like I turn into a little baby yes but when I'm with other people other people don't see that they see like, oh, Christine, she's just this hard ass bitch and like mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. With Tony, I'm a child. I'm an actual child. <laughs> I So this, my water bottle, that's not a water bottle. It's a baba. <laughs> I actually say that. I will say, can you go fill up my baba? <gasps> he is very doting on me and I give him things too. I don't want it to be like, I know it probably sounds like this very one-sided thing. He's, he's healing a lot of childhood wounds by how nurturing he is for me well and because a divine masculine is supposed to be like protective and provider but also these other things like that's not all right they do right right like they should be a safe place for you to express yourself and express your feelings and express your emotions so he's just a very very he's a divine masculine yes he's the one who safe place he is the one who has encouraged me to heal from my childhood for sure. Yeah. So, um, uh, oh, okay. So I was like, I forgot where I was going with that. So Tony is amazing. So anyways, this picture, when I was visiting with the medium, I said, can my dad explain this picture where he is wearing this shirt that says Tony? And can you tell me what he thinks about Tony? And my dad said, well, yeah, I sent him for you. I sent him for you because he was nothing like me. Oh, my God. He was the dad you needed. And not in a weird way. No. Like, it, I know what I know what you mean. Yeah. I think our listeners will know what you mean. My God, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, he's not my dad. He's my zaddy but he no I'm just kidding (laughs) (laughs) but how many of us needed that Mm -hmm. as children yeah like a nurturing father a nurturing mother and didn't get that like that's why we have these mother and father wounds in the first place yeah yeah so it's also too been very healing for me to um raise a child with him and 
watch this child who is like me and is has problems with his temper and has a very big personality and is very childlike. Yeah. He's just he's just like you know how Austin is just like a little boy? Yeah. He's just a kid. Yeah. He's just, he's so kid. Very child. Very childlike. If if you had to like in your head, imagine what like an 11 year old boy would be like, like he is that. Yeah. Yeah. Like same thing with Kai. Untouched by trauma. Yes. Like just this, like what he should be. Pure innocence. Yeah. Like pure innocence. (laughs) Which I want to say what he said the other day watching the movie, but I don't want to take away from your story. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Tell me in a second. I also think too. Um, you know, remember we've said before how sometimes it's hard to watch our partners be good dads Yeah, because there's a part of us that like wishes we had that. Oh my gosh. And there's like a little bit of jealousy there. And this is just, this is natural. Like this is normal to feel that because. And I think I'll always feel that sometimes. I think so too. And watching my husband with my daughter, especially, I was like, Jesus Christ, if I had had that. I wouldn't be as fucked up as I am. I'm not fucked up, but you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think we do have that. Yes. It's just not, it doesn't look like what we thought it would. We have these men in our lives. Who we really needed. Who we needed, who provided safety for us when we needed it and stability when we needed it. Mm -hmm. And it's showing up in an, in an energy in that like father, like energy. Yeah. I'm not, I don't turn into a little baby the way you do, <laughs> but, but I have well, to remind myself that like he, the things that he does for L, he's also learning. He's learning that right. I need those things too. Well, and you were so in your feminine, right? Where right. I was so in my masculine. So <laughs> like me being a baby is so not what you would expect from you (laughs) but it's so what i need maybe me behind closed doors maybe my alter ego with jason is dominatrix s and m baby damn i need to like get my inner badass no but it's also it's also incredibly healing to watch a child that is very similar to you get loved the way they needed to be loved yeah yeah but Again, two things, multiple things can exist at the same time. You're loving watching that. You feel this sadness for little you. You know, sometimes you feel this sadness that you didn't get those things. But what a gift that you get to provide your children with that. Yeah. I mean, that's beautiful. beautiful. Jinx. Jinx Jinx again. (laughs) You win. Okay. Um, Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, that's, that's your story. That's my story this and I'm was sticking like to it. Six days ago. Yes. Not even a week ago that yes. this happened for you. Yes. So what I am incredibly excited about is because you aren't even done processing it. No. And, and I just saw this is important two days ago. that we say this to people because this is like a long process of integrating yeah. and understanding and processing because that night even when you texted me and just said you were done – you, you were like, but I can't talk about it yet. And I was like, well, yeah, no shit. Like, don't talk about it. Like, get some sleep. <laughs> but even I was just like, even just trying to have a regular conversation with you, I'm like, my brain is not working, Leon. It's I hard don't know. To, it's hard to human after that. But And even though the experience was incredibly profound and incredibly healing, uh, f- feeling all of that trauma took everything out of me do you remember i think i sweat and i sobbed we're not meant to feel all of that at once like our bodies were not built to feel all of that at once which is why we develop these like protector parts to like like disassociate and withdraw years of trauma (laughs) you're not i don't think you were supposed to feel that you're alive so thank you thank god (laughs) but like you know could you imagine like the torture that that would just if if one person felt that all the time i think that's why people are scared to do a journey and it's completely valid and i understand that i get that too i 
I think that's why I like to say that I think everyone could benefit from a journey, but I don't think it's for everyone. I love that. It's, it's hard work. It is. It's very, it's very, very difficult to face your shit. And it, even because what you're saying, like it's sometimes facing your shit means facing other people's shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and having that realization that like, it wasn't yours or, and, and you're, you're not just the victim. Yeah. You're the villain too, boo boo. Yeah. Like you are the villain in other people's stories and it's completely valid. Yeah. And so how are you going to show up in the world? What mark are you going to leave? I sent you this article today. I haven't read it yet. I, I think we should maybe do an episode on it. Okay. Because we say it a lot. What? Like how self-awareness is just the first step, but how there are also different parts of being self-aware. Mm-hmm. Like you don't get to just say, like, this is just how I am and this is how it's going to be. Well, I think a lot of us... We are our own victim in our own story. Yeah. And it's hard for us to get out of that. Yeah. Because having... The, well, that feels safe. Right. To, to it, In a weird fucked up way, it feels safe to be the victim. Right. Because if you it's have always this... always everybody else's fault. Realization that you are the bad guy. You know what brings... You know what comes up with that? Shame mm. and guilt. Yeah. And those feel much worse yeah, yeah, yeah. than just being sad and the victim. Yeah. Feeling shame and guilt is really, really hard. That's why a lot of addicts struggle with the 12 steps because once they start feeling that, like a lot of people will, will relapse. Yeah. Cause that's a lot to feel oh shame gosh. and guilt. We got a message from someone about our episode that dropped last week. The, um, not about the tomato. It's not about the tomato. It's not the tomato. And um, she said something about like, there's something about it, but I don't, I can't, I can relate to this. And there's a feeling that happens and I can't quite explain it. That just feels good. Did you read that? She was saying that about what? She was talking about how she also has these rage situations with her husband. Ah, Okay. And a part of it feels good and she can't quite explain it. And she also struggles to apologize afterwards, even though she knows she was wrong. I totally relate to that. And I said, I think I know what feels good about it. It doesn't just feel good because it's a release. That's one way it feels good. It feels good when it comes out because it's a release. But I would be lying if I said there, if I didn't say this, there is a part of it that feels good because it feels powerful. And then when you realize that that's what felt good about it, shame, yeah, instant shame, yeah, and guilt. instant guilt. Because then I'm like, I started, I don't think I said this in that episode, but there are parts of it where I was like, Oh my God, is this, is this what a narcissist feels like? Is this how you get stuck like this? Because you start treating people like this and it feels powerful and you let it get to your head. I don't want that. I don't want to be that person to someone. I just, I don't ever want to feel like I have power over someone ever. Yeah. So that was like an instant, like, oh shit. This is not right. This is not okay. But I just had this realization. What? Too. So, you know, um, I struggled with bulimia because I felt out of control and I felt very powerless in an abusive situation. So my trauma response is your, your flight. I'm fight. Yeah. And fight is where I felt like I had my power back because it was like, I'm not going to be scared of you. You're going to be scared of me. And so that's my trauma response. So when we were in Indianapolis at the, at the concert, yeah. we we're heading, we we're walking back to our hotel and we we're across oh. the street. We were crossing the street. Like drones of people leaving this concert at the same time. Yeah. Crossing a main road. Right. Stoplight. 
where there's also like a traffic person telling what, what are people, they called? Like a know. traffic conductor and, like, a, and a cop yeah. telling people to walk across the street. Even when there was a green light because and an, they're directing traffic. And another reason why I go into fight mode too, I, I want to stress is that I don't want to see other people get hurt. Yeah. I felt like in situations I didn't get protected. And so when that, fight response kicks in sometimes it's i'm trying to protect somebody else that i feel like is getting bullied abused i don't want people to feel like how i felt yeah so anyways this track traffic is supposed to be stopped we're walking across the street and right behind us this car is starting to move because he's wanting to turn but the problem is is there's people walking so he's like starting to like try to like run over them this was in front of us oh what was it in front oh yeah it was in front of us it was in front of us like literally like we're walking up and the car is like we're almost in front of the car and the car is like rolling into traffic walking traffic running over the people in front of us yes like he's going really slow but he's like purposely hitting these people right right so what do you do well, at first I was like, what the fuck? And then I turn around and I see like, okay, the traffic person is like going up to their window and everybody's stopping and like hitting the car. Like, what the fuck, dude, get off of this person. Like, and then I just keep walking. I'm like, they got it. They got it under control. And I keep walking. We're walking and I'm, we're like, I don't even know how far ahead. And we're like, oh shit, where's Christine? <laughs> And we turn around, you're nowhere to be found. And I like had to stop and wait. And I was like, fuck, she was back there. Ready. Ready to fight this guy who was running over us. Right. Because, (laughs) and I think that will always be a part of me. Yeah. But there is good. It was so fucked up though. It was, it was. Everybody's like, dude. I think I will always have this protective spirit. Yeah. Right. But uh, there was this good cop, bad cop. On my shoulder. What were you doing when you went back, when you stayed back? Processing how I was going to handle this. Were you like trying to like punch in his window? (laughs) No, I, I guess my thought, like my thought process is like the gut reaction is like, how are you going to protect these people? Yeah. Bitch, you're not a cop. You're also not a car. You're also not a car. You're also like. But there wasn't that there like when that trauma response kicks in. There's no thinking and adrenaline goes right through. I'm not scared. You could be a seven foot tall, 300 pound man. And I'm going to still talk shit to you and talk like we're about to do get out. And I'm not going to be scared. And so I think, you know, sometimes in those situations, if I if it is a man on the other side, they're probably like this fucking delusional bitch. Um. But it was, it was this, like, I had to stop myself and be like, this is not your, this is not your, this is not your fight. Well, and I turned around and I saw that the cops had it under control. So I was I like, know. all right, they got this. Right. But it, it, it was but it fucked is. up, but I, like, right, they got this. Absolutely. But I have to like, in those moments, stop. Yeah. And not just go with what my gut wants me to do. Right. I have to think about it and be like, it's okay. They will handle it. You have to know when to fight. And I, I'm going to probably always work on that. Yeah. But it like, you know, if there were a situation with you and if I felt like you were in danger, that would immediately be like my go-to without even a thought, without even feeling scared. It would just immediately protective instinct kicks, kicks right in. I feel like mine would be, um, do I say something? Do I do something? Is this my place to do anything? And you're immediately like, no, it's my place to do something. And then you have to talk yourself like, is it my place to do something? Right. Do I say something? Do I need to fight this fight? Right. Because my initial reaction is to go fight a fucking bear. That's why it took me so long to like decide whether or not I stand up and do something about a situation I haven't talked about <laughs> on this podcast. Is it what I think? you're? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to talk about it yet okay because we're still in it and we're not on the other side of it but okay yeah it was why I had such a hard time like do I is this where I speak up 
Yeah. Is this where I fight and back? so so me in those situations you would have been speaking up so long ago well also but I'm like can I go with you oh right can I, can I come with you right and be your bodyguard like that's you and I have one other person who texts me once a week do you need me to go with you tonight do you need me to go with you tonight and every time I'm like no I'm good but maybe I should take you guys up on it one time yeah. if it continues to happen yeah. We'll talk about that one day. Yeah. But uh, where I was going with like the rage and the shame thing, like the second I realized that that might be how an abuser or a narcissist feels powerful. Yeah. Was the second I was able to apologize. Yeah. And say, I am so sorry I ever made you feel that way. I had to feel that rage and I had to feel the shame and I had to feel the guilt and it took me a minute because in the beginning, that feeling was like, see, it worked. And you never got to express your anger. Worked, didn't it? I may have gotten angry, but at least you, you know, heard what I had to say. And it, it took me a minute to feel that rage or the anger and the shame and the guilt. And when that hit, I was like, oh. Well, give yourself some grace for that because you like raged out four times. And I know. This, where I'm like, uh, I... How, I can't tell you how many times where I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. You well, and someone it. in our TikTok was like, this has been happening to me for a year. And I was like, a year? Like, it's happened four times for me total in my, my entire my life. 39 years of existence, I've raged four times. Yeah. But I just want to say this and I will keep you guys updated. I am in my luteal phase right now. Oh. And I've been crying a lot. I sent you a photo yesterday, like sobbing. I'm crying a lot, but like, we're like, we're like on, we're on defense. We're in defense mode right now. Like my husband knows I'm in luteal phase. Like I know I'm in luteal phase and we're just like, all right, so we're just, we're going to be on guard. Okay. Oh my God. I thought I favorited it, but I didn't. What and was it? It makes me so sad it was one of your text messages to me, and I was like, this fucking bitch. Um, here, I got it. Okay, so one, this was a good one. As I was channeling my inner Christie today, I was visualizing myself standing in front of them and not trying so hard to avoid them, which I love that I saved that. Um, but the other one, if they catch me in my luteal face, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> and I was like... God love her. I was being like serious. even I know, but even when you talk shit, you're like when you talk shit, I'm oh like, Oh my god. Oh God love you. If my my best friend who has seen me like in high school, like have to fight people and in college have to fight people. And let me just rephrase that because I got jumped both times. But like the situations where I had to defend myself, I defend myself and it's funny. <laughs> Because that is something I would I would be like, bitch, I'm in my luteal phase. And then everybody behind me would be like, what the fuck? Yeah, I literally would say that because I just don't think things through like that. And I right. remember walking in on a boyfriend literally with another girl and walking out and being like, have fun licking my leftovers. Like, I just don't. Your brain doesn't operate that way. No, I'm like that, literally that like the lint liquor commercial like that's me you when i'm cootie queen <laughs> you lint liquor lint liquor um mother trucker mother trucker where i <laughs> i never s started that the violence but i ended it and i have like broken bones okay i just want to say like that's not me raging by the way the me raging was terrifying yeah that wasn't that yeah. So you're saying if you were the way you raged with Jason. Oh, if anybody saw laughed. that in person, you wouldn't have laughed. You would have been cowering in a corner. Wow. No, you probably would have fought me <laughs> for him. <laughs> Honestly. Don't talk to Jason that way. How dare you talk to Jason that way? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I probably would have been like, you need to tone it down, but he kind of deserves it. No, I'm just <laughs> I don't know if I would have been. Like, I know. I don't know. Either. I don't want anybody to ever have to see that again. Like, I don't want that to happen. It was like hulking out. I was literally like hulking out. I don't know. 
Yeah. But I don't like how it made me feel afterwards. I don't think, I never liked how it made me feel either. Good. But in the moment, again, I do, I do understand the feeling power, but it, after that, it doesn't feel good. No. There is a lot of shame and, and guilt and. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people are numbed to that, to that though. Like they feed off of it. That's yeah. the scary thing. That's how you know, like you're in like dangerous territory. Yeah. I also liked that people were intimidated by me and like didn't want to fuck with me because they were intimidated by me. We're now, you know, like that's not, it's not a flex, Christine. <laughs> it felt like a flex. I love how moment. opposite we are. I do too. I fucking love it. I do too. I think it's good. And I think it's, you know, if, if people relate to you and I think people relate to me. I feel like sometimes not as many people relate to me because I feel like not as many women are as like fucking I don't know. You get a lot of private angry. DMs too. You get a lot of private DMs. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but I'm just like the anger, like an angry woman who like kicks people's asses. I'm like, I feel like it's a little bit more rare, but I don't know. Yeah, there, there should be a little bit of balance in there. But um, okay, we're like – Done. An hour in. <laughs> We're done. Bye. No, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just excited for you to continue to learn from that experience. Yeah. And if, if there are any people who have experience with breath work and want to send me recommendations my way, I would love that. I but know. that's, that's the, that's the modality that's um, really resonated with me besides psychedelics. So well, you know that they say like you can do like you can have a psychedelic journey without doing psychedelics by doing breath work and yeah. deprivation tanks yeah. and like things like that where yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for letting me share my I story. I was literally just going to say thank you for sharing that because I've been like dying to know for like six days. I know. <laughs> and um, I thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much, Jenny. For another beautiful life. What a beautiful person. She's the real fucking deal, man. Dude, she's legit as fuck. <laughs> yeah, she made a believer out of you. Well, that and Tony was like, oh, mediums are fucking quacks. Jason is still that still that way. I'm still we working both, on it because we both. I think Jason's experience with his father is a lot like yours. Yes. Left at an early age only knew bad things yes. from a, one person Yes, when he passed away, started hearing different stories. Yes. So I yes. think it would be, I don't even want to put that out there. I'm just saying like, I think he needs something like that. I agree. I think it'd be very healing for him and he doesn't even realize it. Doesn't even know it because he still thinks mediums are quacks. Well, let's fuck him up with some more woo woo shit. Why don't we? Let's fuck him up. <laughs> All right. To our listeners, um, we will talk to you guys next week. Stay curious. Be open. See you on the other side. Bye. I like that. <laughs>